I want to say hello to all those who are online this morning. While uh, we're in here and we look around and go, where is everybody? There's usually anywhere from 10 to 20 people online uh, live on Sunday mornings. And then there's another group of people who, uh, once the recording comes available, are watching it Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, uh, and often commenting on the service. And then uh, Tom Frask, I've mentioned a few times, he has to work almost every Sunday. And I think it's Tuesdays at lunchtime, uh, he sits down and eats his lunch and looks at the recording of the service and has had two or three or four people joining him. He sent me a message the other day and said it's up to 12 joining him. So hello to those at Del Monte on Tuesday or Wednesday who will be uh, joining us uh, in the recorded worship and uh, very much a part of us as much as you are and anybody else is. So just uh, uh, we're not here alone. <laughs> uh, there's just a lot of different ways that people join us in worship these days, and uh, so that's good. I want to take you on a journey in faith this morning. Um, at the beginning of the service, uh, we were supposed to read a scripture, and the bulletin said Matthew 14:28, and I didn't have it in my mind, and the reason I didn't have it in my mind is because it wasn't the scripture I wanted to read. Uh, that was my fault. I gave it to Marcy Wrong, and she just typed in the bulletin what I gave her. But it's Matthew 14, 27. Jesus said to them, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Uh, as I think about this faith thing, I, I think about some of the great stories in the Bible that talk about faith. And of course, one of these is right here in Matthew uh, chapter 14 where uh, the disciples are out in a boat uh, in the Sea of Galilee, heading from shore to shore. Storm comes up, and uh, we, we hear different stories of, of storms in the Bible, and the disciples are involved, and Jesus is involved. But in this particular storm, Jesus is not with the disciples, but all of a sudden, during the fourth watch of the night, uh, which is, I think, what, 3 o'clock in the morning? 3 to 6 in the morning? Has anybody ever been up between 3 to 6 in the morning out in the middle of the woods where there's shadows and scary things and scary noises? It's scary. So here these guys are, early morning or late night, whichever. A storm has come up, and all of a sudden here's this form walking to them on the water. They weren't sure if they were seeing something or not. They weren't sure what was going on. And all of a sudden, as they're yelling, it's a ghost and crying out in fear, Jesus says, they recognized his voice, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. And then there's Peter, good old brave Peter, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you and I'll walk on the water. Has anyone here ever walked on the water? I have. Of course, it was frozen. But I've walked on the water. Um, so Jesus has come. Peter starts walking, and about that time he heard something. He looked over, and here's this big, huge wave crashing on him, and he thought he was going to die, and he started sinking. And Jesus reached down, grabbed his hand, and pulled him back up. And they walked back to the boat together. He looked at him and said to all the disciples, really, you of little faith, why did you doubt? An amazing story. Um, he's walking on water. He needs help. Jesus got into the boat. The wind died down. The waves died down. Uh, over in the book of John, he states that immediately they were on the other side of the sea. I find that quite amazing. Here they are in the middle of a storm, and here they are at shore. Why? Because Jesus was in the boat. Um, in Matthew chapter 17, we, we find another story. Story of faith. Um, a boy was possessed by a demon. They had probably tried everything in the world to get this kid to calm down. 
Jesus recognized the problem. He sent the demon packing away. And the disciples looked at him and said, why couldn't we do this? Matthew 17, 19, Jesus says, because you have so little faith. This is a familiar verse to us. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you could move mountains. Did anyone notice the picture on the front of the bulletin this morning? Just take a look at it real quick. Imagine that mountain just exploding out of the ground and moving. I don't know where Marcy found that picture, but it, it, it pretty well tells it. The impossible done through faith. Some years ago, I had a church board member say to me, what you want to do is impossible. Well, I've had a lot of that happen down through the years, but this board member in particular said, what you want to do is impossible. Now, we were changing a room in the church into a kitchen. It already was a kitchen, kind of. It had cupboards in it. It had counters in it. It had a stove in it. It had a refrigerator in it. It was next to the ladies' restroom. The only problem was it didn't have a sink or water in it. And so after a church dinner, the ladies would go into the ladies' restroom and try to wash dishes and pans and stuff in the sink. Has anybody ever been in a gas station restroom and seen those little sinks hang on the wall there? That's what this was, a gas station style sink. Well, we decided there needed to be a sink in that bathroom. Well, the problem was, excuse me, in that kitchen, Marcy's correcting me over here, in that kitchen. So anyhow, here we are, the, the wall backs up to the ladies' restroom, but the water was on the far wall in the ladies' restroom. Well, getting that water over oh, there was no problem. You go up to the attic, over, and back down. You got your water. But, Pastor, it's impossible because there's no drain there. Well, there was a floor drain in the ladies' restroom. And it just appeared to be impossible to get that drain from that room where we wanted the, the, the kitchen sink to that floor drain. Well, I mentioned it to my father-in-law how impossible the job was. It just wasn't going to happen, and, and I was frustrated about it, and he said, show it to me, and I did. And he said, uh, well, it's not impossible. Well, a few days later, some plumbing later, a jackhammer, tearing part of a floor out, putting a drain in, re-cementing the floor, some new tile. It was a used sink, but we had a kitchen sink that functioned. And if I remember right, the ladies were happy. Well, if you have faith enough in somebody or in a situation, a lot of times it works out. Here's some thoughts on faith. Hebrews 11, 38 through 40, is talking about uh, all these heroes of faith. Uh, chapter 11, you know, we, we hear about Abraham and Moses and, and all these people that we hear about all the time about their great lives of faith. But then we find these verses down there that talk about there's a lot of other people who were commended for their faith. Some of them lived lives of persecution. Some of them lived lives of just awful things happening to them. A lot of them were people who prayed and prayed and prayed, but by name they were not mentioned in the Bible. But they were commended for their faith. Who were they? I don't have names to give you because we don't have names for them. They were normal people like you and me. They weren't the Abrahams. They weren't the Moseses. They weren't all these people that did these great things. They weren't people who led people out of great things. They were normal, everyday people like you and me. And with that thought in mind, here's some practical thoughts I had this week about faith. We have to have a proper faith. Matthew 19, 26, after Jesus had done a lot of other miracles, said, 
all things are possible with God. Specifically there, he was talking about being born again, about salvation, about what's going on in our lives. And so many times I think we'll go and say, all things are possible with God. And we're looking at things that maybe just aren't supposed to be. We need to remember that when Jesus was saying all things are possible with God, he was specifically talking about salvation. We'll look at a person and say, oh, their life's never going to turn around. Or somebody will come and say, Pastor, there's no way, there is no way that God could do anything for me simply because I'm such a horrible person. That's not what my Bible says. My Bible says that I can receive salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ. I can receive forgiveness through the blood of Jesus Christ. I can receive it through grace. It does not happen because of works. It's nothing that I do, but it's not impossible because Jesus Christ gave his life on the cross for my sins. All things spiritual are possible through God. Now here's another verse that I, I keep finding that we talk about, and, and that's where this slide comes in. Philippians 4.13 I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. We've got to keep that verse in context, folks. Yeah, I may have trouble opening a pickle jar. But who's going to give me this? Yeah, do, do I need to pray, Lord, help me open this pickle jar? You know, let's keep it in context. What was Paul talking about here? He was talking about living an exemplary Christian life. He wasn't talking about opening a pickle jar. If I want to open a pickle jar that I'm having trouble opening, we have this little thing under our cupboard at home that has teeth in it, and I just take the jar there and hope I have enough strength to twist the jar, and it pops the lid off. As I'm getting more mature, I'm finding I have to do that more often. Or I can go out to the garage and get this big pipe wrench that I have and open the jaws on that big enough and put it on the pickle jar and have Marcy hold the pickle jar and twist that wrench and that jar will pop off. Or she'll go flying around in circles one or the other. I don't need to pray to God to open the pickle jar. I just need to twist the lid off and get it off. But what I do need to pray to God is, let me live an exemplary Christian life, and I can do all things spiritually through Christ who gives me strength. Now before that, he's talking about in verse 8, whatever is noble, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, whatever is right, whatever is honest, Think on these things. In verse 12, he's talking about learning to be content with who we are and where we are in our lives. And yet we keep trying to open that pickle jar and claiming that God can give us the strength to do that. Well, what we need the strength to do is to live our lives for God every day of the week. And some days, that takes more strength than others. Let me give you an example. When I was 18, came to Olivet, I lived on the third floor of Chapman Hall. Now, anybody who has been over on campus knows that Chapman Hall has extra high ceilings. It's an extra high building. And so third floor in that building was kind of like uh, probably fourth floor line of other buildings. My Monday, Wednesday, Friday class at 7.30 a.m. was on fourth floor of Burke. Now, anybody who drives by there knows that fourth floor Burke is extra high because extra high ceilings, plus the basement sticks halfway out of the ground, so you have that extra half flight that goes into the building, four and a half flights up. Now, being an 18-year-old college student, you know, we didn't go to bed at night. You stayed up half the night. Wake up at 7.20, class is in 10 minutes. It's on fourth floor of Burke. I could be out of bed, teeth brushed, hair combed, dressed, having used the facilities, third floor Chapman, and be in class, fourth floor of Burke, on time. I was never late for that class. We would run down those steps of Chapman Hall, two and three and four steps at a time, just jump, run across campus, hit the steps in Burke, two and three steps at a time running up, get to our class on fourth floor, and not be out of breath. Wow. Now, could I do that now? 
I'd be lucky to make it up the steps at all, let alone down those other steps without half killing myself. Could I claim that I can do all things who God who gives me strength and say, Lord, help me do this and just go running down those steps and run across that campus and run back up? Let me just say this. Don't test God by doing nonsensical, crazy things. Our bodies slow down as we get older. No matter what we do, I'm finding that our bodies slow down as we get older. The Bible says it's appointed on the man wants to die. My body's going to slow down. I don't need God to give me strength to run down those steps and across and back up those others again. What I need God to do is give me the strength to live an exemplary Christian life. Somebody said, uh, in life, don't be a careless idiot. I changed it to don't test God by doing nonsensical, crazy things. I look at this whole faith thing, and just trying to keep it in perspective. Sometimes we have to act on our faith. Peter walked on the water. Sometimes it requires work on our part. Peter had to get out of that boat physically. He had to look at Jesus and say, help me walk. Well, I'm not going to go out to the river this afternoon and try to walk on water, especially down by the dam. I just know what would happen. That would be a crazy, nonsensical act. But I do need to have God help me walk on the water this week to get me through every day, every moment, with my spiritual life intact. I can do that through Christ who gives me strength. I, I've heard several statements about faith this week. It's the starting place of adventures. Think about that one. It's a weapon to fight with. Faith is different than religion. I can have a religious experience. I can have an experience where I, I, I just feel God's presence with me. I can have an experience where I hear a great hymn of faith and it just moves me. I can have an experience where, where I have the radio on and I hear some song played that just, just reminds me of God's love and I have this religious feeling. But faith says, I can do this with God's help. Faith says... I've asked you to do something and you said you'll do it and I trust your words because I've seen you in action before and I know you'll carry through on this thing. That's what we do with God and Jesus. We've seen them act before on our half. It increases our faith. And so we just know that we can trust God, that we can trust Jesus, that we can trust the Holy Spirit to carry us through. That's far above just a religious experience. I think about uh, Jesus getting in the boat with the disciples. They were in a storm. They had more storms after the, that. Having God in your boat doesn't mean you'll not face any storms. It means that no storm can sink your boat. Walk in faith. You'll never walk alone. I don't know about you, but I think about faith, and, and, and I'm ready for some more impossible things to take place. I'm ready for that <coughs> drain to that sink to get put in. I'm ready for the cement to get blown out of the way. I'm ready for the plumbing to go in. I'm ready for the repairs to be made so it looks like nothing happened, but yet life is better because faith took over and some actions were done and things were taken care of. <clears throat> Let me tell you a funny story so I can tell you another funny story. I had my sermon for this week already. 
for some reason on Wednesday, I brought it to church with me. I thought, well, I'm going to have time to sit here and put some finishing touches on it and add some things to the media for Sunday. And, and then Carol George gave this outstanding testimony on Wednesday at church. It was just one of those testimonies that just, well, I just wanted to shout and praise God. And I looked at Carol and I said, thanks. Now I have to change Sunday sermon. You just preached it. And Marcy got after me a little bit about that and said, oh, he's just kidding. I kind of was and I kind of wasn't. I got home on uh, Wednesday and I thought, well, let me get everything sitting out here so tomorrow morning uh, I can get up early before we go to that conference and I can look Sunday sermon notes over and they weren't there. In fact, it was Wednesday I got home. They weren't there. I couldn't find them. I had given Mel a whole pile of papers and I I, I called him. I said, Mel, would you look through those pile of papers and see if my sermon notes are there? No, they're not. I looked through my folder. I thought it was in three times. I looked in that folder again on Thursday. It wasn't there. I looked again Friday. It wasn't there. Th Thursday night, Jesse and I came out to church to get things, things ready for fire pit Friday, and, and I looked all over my office. Those sermon notes weren't there. They disappeared. I thought Carol and Marcy had taken them and disappeared them on me just because of what I said. Meanwhile, in my mind, the whole sermon is just coming through my mind again. Yesterday morning, I get up early. I thought, I'm going to finish the message. I opened my notebook where a whole bunch of stuff was, and guess what I found? Right where it should have been. It wasn't there Wednesday afternoon. It wasn't there Thursday. It wasn't there Friday. I want to know when you put it back there, dear. I have no idea where it went or where it came from. All I can say is God must have had a better idea. Now this morning we get to church and and Ann walks in the sanctuary and goes, I need a better attitude. She said I could say this. And I said, so do I. Thanks, now i got to rewrite Sunday sermon again. Because one of the things that I'm ready to see take place is an attitude change. Being more positive in myself. An attitude change that, that just is ready to, to accept the whole world as part of Christianity. An attitude change that, that just simply says, get up and get moving. An attitude change that says, we can do this. I've been thinking about time efficiency and finding better ways to do things. And, and, and you know, every, every Monday I, I sit down and I, I, I plan out the week and, and advertising for the week. Most of you don't realize that there's a Facebook ad that comes out every Friday. Now, if you're on Facebook, you realize that. I designed that on Monday mornings and I'm thinking, it's taking just too long to design these things. And, and, and I'd been really praying about it and whatnot. And, 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 um, and then on Friday mornings, I send out that text message to everybody, which especially those on faith, not on Facebook get that message on Friday morning. I'm thinking, there's got to be a better way to do this. And I've been praying about it thinking, this is impossible. Well, thanks to uh, some young people I hang with, they're telling me about this new website that has ads that are specifically designed size-wise for Facebook. You know, it took about five minutes to put that together rather than an hour. Two weeks in a row now. And then all of a sudden it hit me Friday, uh, the other day is, all I have to do is copy and paste and I can send that same thing out on Friday morning as a text message. That took about half an hour less than what it normally does the impossible because we prayed because God showed the way I've been thinking about financial burdens that people have and yes there's a lot of things we can do personally to relieve financial burdens cut down spending I, I was thinking the other day if we had to cut back spending where could I cut back spending well we could do away with our Y membership we could do away with the newspaper. We could do away with cable. No, no, Hallmark's there. We need Hallmark. Uh, but I've been thinking about different things that you could do if you had to. You see, when we start praying, God says, I'm going to help your financial burdens, but you may have to do something on your own to do it, take care of it. 
I've seen some impossible financial burdens be relieved of some folks lately. I'm ready to see some health issues taken care of. I, I, I'm very concerned about some folks and what's going on in their lives. And, and I realize that there are things that we can do in our own lives personally to help our own health issues. When we pray, God points us to those things and helps us overcome the impossible. I see people who are hopeless and despair. I'm ready to see some hopelessness and despair overcome. I'm ready to see a revival spirit. There's times when you look and you stop and think that we need a revival, but it's almost impossible because of all kinds of things that go on that grab people's attention. But I realize if we just start praying and praying and praying, the revival spirit would come in our own personal lives and the impossible would happen. Let me give you a couple of stories from this week. Impossible things. Uh, Mel, Mel has given me permission to share this story. He looked outside the other morning and the, one of his truck tires was low. And so it was just before their daughter left. She offered to take it over and get it fixed. And he said, no, I'll do it later. I'll just have Barb follow me and we'll drop the truck off. And they'll call me back when the tire's ready. So he drives the truck over just, what, half a mile, three quarters of a mile to Hovey. And... Uh, they called him back later and said, Mel, God was looking out for you. Uh, the guy got in his truck to pull it in the shop to fix the tire, and the brakes went out on it. He put the brake pedal down. There were no brakes. I, I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, Mel goes to Starbucks. He owns Starbucks there on 50. Well, not really, but he goes there a lot. What if he had come up to late at 50 and hit his brakes at Armour Road and gone out into traffic? God was in his boat. A storm of life, but God was in his boat and protected him. That increased my faith. You know, often I'm riding with Mel and we're blasting down the expressway and we get off the expressway here. We could have ended up in the cemetery real easy in more ways than one. God is good. I have permission to share this story as well. I have prayed for Jamie and Marcy for years. Their work situations, some health issues down through the years. Um, Jamie's had an impossible job situation for ever. Getting called to work at 3 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning. Getting home at midnight, getting called back in at 7. Uh, Saturdays, Sundays seem to be the worst. Marcy's been driving 40 miles to work. Good teaching job over in that other state there, Indiana. Uh, just some deep concerns there. All of a sudden, Marcy gets this job out here at, what do they call that, SAG? <laughs> yeah, SAGs. Uh, uh, St. Anne grade school. She's driving eight miles to work starting here next week rather than 40 each way. Do you know what kind of a financial savings that is in gas, oil changes, wear and tear on your car, nerves, <laughs> travel time? You know what that's going to do for their family? And then Jamie gets a job working at Moments High School, regular hours, regular days, an impossible situation, no longer impossible because God was in the house. I don't know, folks, about you, but that, that kind of increases faith. Let me just tell you, if you'll just step out in faith, you're about to overcome something you've been dealing with. Your heart and your mind will be at peace again. Be patient. Everything's going to be okay. We serve an awesome God.